Hey guys and gals, it's Mike. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to go over a plan on how I'm going to fix the pins and bushings in the case 1840 that I just purchased. What I found on it, um, and this machine's had a quite a bit of work in the past and overall it's pretty decent, but when I was using it, I found it had a lot of play in the ends of the bucket lift cylinders. And I'll show you here what I found. So here's the end of the cylinder, lift cylinder. Lifts the arms up and down. Well, someone was doing work on the cylinder and got in a hurry because they were going to sell it is what, what I think happened. But they didn't put the bushings back in. These are bushings from the other end of the cylinder, but they're supposed to be bushings here. One on each. And then there's a pin that goes through it. Well, the pin was there, but there was no bushings. So it egged out the holder or the, the end of the cylinder. And I'll show you a little bit later that I this is finished now, but I'll, I have some video of me using um, boring bar in the mill and cutting the egg shape clean. So now I got a round hole to work with again. So I'm gonna run you back and forth here and you can see. It's not much. About, I don't know, three thousandths over the whole length. So I, what I need to do is still, I still need to go up a little bit more on this end. It is so close to cleaning up. There's this bar should be a lot bigger, but I haven't done a lot of boring. So my tooling is pretty limited. This isn't gonna be a bearing surface. It's just gonna be a surface where the bushing pushes in. So I'm not real worried about it. I'll probably take a little hone or some sandpaper to give it a little bit smoother finish. But I think I'm gonna go another 10 thousandths. Probably take another 20 from the looks of it. But um, I just uh, unwrapped a tool that I bought from Ukraine. And I, I just happened to find it on eBay. I think I paid $144 shipped to the States from Ukraine. And this is an adjustable reamer, but it's a little different in that it has this pilot. It's longer and has this pilot bushing on the end. So you can... Make sure when you're reaming uh, that you get it aligned. Kind of what you would do on like line boring. So I'm going to try to use this to um, open up the holes on the loader arms because they're also worn a little bit as well. So now that I have everything apart and I'm making my own bushings, I'm going to take the opportunity to get everything as close and perfect as I can. So I'll show you the loader arm that I'm gonna be working on here. But uh, before I bring you over, the, I did take some measurements. I'll move all this. So this is the loader. This is the hole in the loader arm where the end of this cylinder, the pin goes through the loader arm. And measuring it in this direction, 1.019. And then in this direction, 1.027. I thought it was worse than that. But um, the idea 
is, is I'm going to use this to bring this within hopefully a thousandth or two so that when I make my new pin, um, the tolerance will be a lot better. This is the pin that uh, is on the other side and it's, you can see it's seen better days. So I'm making the, uh, the bushings, I have one made. Here's, and this is made out of, um, that's bearing steel, I can't remember. Not 12L14, it's, uh, I remember it's 1% carbon. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll throw that uh, at the inside the video of what this is, but this is um, un, unhardened. I plan on trying to harden it in my gas boards with a temperature thermal couple, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but before I finish the inside of this, I need to know what size I'm going to make the pins, and that's going to determine what the final size of this hole uh, ends up as. So I'll bring you over to the loader arm here. All right, come over here on the loader. It's a little hard with the loader being so high in the air, but uh, I got it up on the uh, safety jack over there, and I'm trying to get these uh, this look adjustable reamer small enough to go in the hole. But right now the um, Cutting teeth are too big, but these are tapered. And they're tapered the same as the groove that's cut in here. So as you slide it one way or the other, it gets bigger and smaller. So you're gonna run this nut down, and then you slide all the, the knives down without cutting yourself. Like that. goes in there. So I'm going to tighten this nut down. I'm going to go grab my wrench. Keep this all in alignment. That's the idea of it anyway. And then so I need to Make it bigger because it's not doing anything. Looks like it's going to break, to be honest with you. Well, I am not really know it's supposed to go back. All right, guys, so I'm done messing with this thing for right now. But I measured it again um, before. It was 1.0, so one inch, 19 thousandths. After, in the same direction, one inch, 28 thousandths. And then in this direction, an inch and 27. 
after an inch and 32 for a difference of four thousandths after, eight thousandths before. So I think I uh, reduced it by half, so that's a good thing. I'd prefer to see this, you um, know, two or under. I mean, with Reamer, uh, my understanding is, is it should be almost perfect. But um, am I expecting too much from an adjustable reamer? I kind of wanted to uh, build up material in front of these blades or knives, but they're, they don't appear to have uh, chipped or, or be damaged or anything. So maybe some of this is from me not having a proper tap wrench to I'm putting side load on it from using one handle. Could be. Um, I don't know. Is it because this is a cheap reamer or is that just all that an adjustable reamer can do? What I think I'll do is maybe run this a little bit more with some oil and try to get, um, figure something out to use, have a double handle on this. And then to finish it out, I'll use like a wheel cylinder hone or some sort of a brake hone for cars that can polish it out and get some of that rough texture out of there. So I don't know, you guys let me know. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Is there, is this a waste of time? Is it because I'm using one handle? Again, I'm not gonna spend money on someone to professional line bore this machine. It's, this machine is, if it ever sees more than 500 hours in my lifetime, I'd probably be surprised, but you never know. Um, I just don't have, I only have a few acres here and I just don't have a whole lot of need for a skid steer, but it's fun and that's why I have it. So anyway, if you found this interesting, please, please click the like button, uh, su subscribe. That would help me out a lot trying to build my channel up. But um, other than that, we'll see you on next time.